OpenG, everything you need to know about OpenG. I'm going to show you like eight, yeah, eight chords, actually nine chords, chord shapes in OpenG that are very useful. You're going to love this. All right, I'll, I'll jump right into it. Well, first, OpenG, how do you do it? E string, whole step down to D. A string, whole step down to G. They're all the same. And the E string, a whole step down to D. So you have... I'm just gonna do it, then I'll explain it afterwards. So that was basically G, A minor, B minor, or G with B in the bass. C major, D major, E minor, then a D with the F sharp in the bass with the you know the third of the bass. Back to one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Then also, you, I want to show you the flat seven, which is F. So with that, you can have, say, we'll go one flat seven four. One flat seven four is a very useful thing. Open G is just that, and then uh, with the uh, an A minor, you kind of just do an E position. Can you? I'll zoom in on this if I can. If my editing skills are good enough. So you basically just make an E minor shape and add a C. So you have. So that's kind of like an A minor seven with a fourth. Then up here, do the same thing. So you have a B minor with a G in there. Same thing with a third, throw in an E. It's a big C major. D major, up to here. So you can see the majors are the same thing. It's kind of... Now I'll go up to minor, uh, uh, root fifth, and then the third, or, or tenth, however you look at it. That's an E minor. And then we go to D again, but it's got the third in the bass. Then back to one. So. that you can do a lot you can get uh, you can cover a lot of tunes and if you're a songwriter these other voicings might open up some new ideas for you you know kind of harkens back to harkens back <laughs> which kind of relates back to my previous video talking about chord voicings so this is basically the same thing but useful things if you should ever find yourself in open G and but for creating it's great so for an example I will do like a chord progression for learning to fly, we'll say. Uh, so that's basically four, one, six minor, five. So which is, what am I talking about? If For those who don't live in Nashville, it's the number system. And it's the same thing as in classical music, the Roman numeral thing. So if we go four, one, six minor, five. One, six minor, five. Oh, I just did some chords I didn't show you. So it, with using the low E string, instead of doing this E minor voicing, we're gonna go. So you have root, fifth, third, and then whatever's happening down there. Very cool. And then for a D, you get open D, root, fifth, third. So you make kind of a B minor seven, but you're kind of, you leave the G open and the E open. So.
So with that, here's my point that you can take those chords, mix them up a little bit, change the length of each chord and come up with something really cool of your own. So let's try something different. Like let's, let's take each of those chords, double the length and come up with something really cool and interesting. Like, uh... So there you go. You have a whole new vibe with using uh, the same four chords that we just started with. Let's do, let's just mix it up. So we just did four, one, six minor, five. Let's do six minor, four, one, five, which again is another progression that's in like every a million pop songs. I can't even start to, I'll think of something in a minute, but <laughs> right now it's just all over the place. All right, so we said six minor, four, one five, which would be E minor, C, G, D. So let's do some cool things. Change it up a little bit there. I'm kind of meandering a little bit because it's Saturday morning. I, you know, I could be up doing stuff and instead I'm sitting here talking to you people. What? So anyway, you kind of get the idea there. I showed you like what was it? Eight chords? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you can do a lot of stuff. Sorry, I'm having tr trouble with my ear monitors. All right, so I'm throwing in all kinds of things here. Let me show you a little parlor trick. Second finger on G here. So, you know, you're at a party and somebody pulls out an acoustic guitar and they're playing Kumbaya. You can pick it up and be like, well, I do, I know this little riff. You'll be the life of the party. I've seen it happen. Speaking of experience, I haven't talked about this yet, and I'm going to do this in another video probably, by uh, formally introducing myself and kind of explaining who I am and what I've done. I've, I've been a touring musician since 1990 something like 25 years touring been a side man for several acts uh one of them being like the, one of the best-selling artists of all time meatloaf i toured with meatloaf for 15 years i was in his band for 19 years but we stopped touring a few years ago and then he unfortunately passed away this january early this year <laughs> But anyway, my point is, I've toured with several different artists and uh, been around the world a million times. So uh, what I'm showing you is basically real world knowledge. You know, I, I'm, I'm giving you a knowledge transfer of what I've learned over the years, which has been, a, you know, I've seen a thing or two. 
I've done a thing or two. What I'm sharing with you is, like I said, I've experienced the real world touring and what you actually need to know to kind of make it as a, if you wanted to be a side man and go into the, you know, or whatever you need to know about the touring world, ask me any kind of question you want. Send me whatever. Um, yeah, send me a message, ask me whatever. I'll try to answer. But anyway, I'll do a, a full video of, of my accolades and accomplishments. But for now, uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah, I, uh, I've toured with Meatloaf, went on to Judd, Bread, all the food groups. I live in Nashville, so I've toured with a bunch of country artists. Which is, that's a whole different thing. You go out on weekends, get on a bus on Thursday night, come home Sunday morning. With Meatloaf, we would, I'd get on a plane and be gone for six weeks minimum. We would just go hardcore. Sometimes I'd get on, I'd leave home and be gone for th more than three months, just touring Europe and wherever. Um, it was quite an experience, which uh, you know I'll share more about that later. Very right now, back to Open G. I forgot what we were doing. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was showing you a fun parlor trick. All right, so basically what we're doing is G, G major seven, G seven, kind of a C, then a C minor. Can you see that? And then I was throwing in some fancy things. Uh-oh, maybe I should have cleaned my fingernails before I start zooming in here, you know what I mean? I was out, you know, working on car engines, uh, chopping wood. What? All right, back to this. There you go. Zoom in on that, slow it down, learn that. And I'm gonna leave you with one last thing. I'm very chatty this morning. I'm gonna do one last lick. We're kind of, notes are kind of hanging over each other, which is a really cool thing. Got that. C, open B. something fun to have in your toolbox, right? All right. You can tell I like reverb. Hopefully you can get something cool out of that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll try to keep doing more of these if you're into them. Let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye.